Well, good evening, everyone. Larry Sparks here, and we have a special video tonight. I'm going to bring on our guest in just a moment. I'm sure so many of you are familiar with Miss Karen Wheaton from The Ramp and the amazing impact that she has had, continues to have on the next generation. But folks, I, I only do these video broadcasts, whether it's an interview or just myself, when I feel like the Holy Spirit has something very timely and urgent to say. So folks, as you're coming on, as always, let us know where you're watching from. And if any of you, if any of you are part of Karen Wheaton's front porch family, you must let us know because we would love to see that. Say a special greeting to you. And now, without further ado, I have Miss Karen Wheaton here. What an honor to be with you. So oh, much, Larry. Larry's family. So I just, I feel honored to be a part of your extended family now, Larry. Oh, it is a joy. Well, I, literally our whole, our whole family has worked together, ministered together, um, and it's been a delight. And every member of your family is not only a wonderful friend, but I, like I was telling you, I love the authority God has uniquely given each and every one of them. I mean, it's easy for a child or daughter of a minister to almost coast on the relationship with God their their parents have. Uh, Lauren and Lindsay are exceptional people who have great authority, and I love how God is using them. So. Well, that means the world to me. I love the word, and a lot of these mothers watching right now would relate. In Third John, it says, I have no greater joy than to know that my children walk in truth. Hmm. So there is no greater joy for us as parents than to hear that our children are following the will of God for their life. There's no greater sorrow when there's not, when they are not, but there's no greater joy when they are. So let, let moms just be encouraged by that today that yours is coming too. Your those believing for prodigals, yes. yours is coming too. Well, and you know, we might we'll we'll see where the Holy Ghost takes us in the next 30 minutes, but at yeah. the end we may that's one of those things where I believe in having people pray for things because they have authority in that area. And Karen, sometimes, you know, people don't understand, wow, that person has authority to pray for that thing. Why? Well, they went through the fire. That's, That's right. why they have the authority. So you've been there. I have been there. And I've seen God answer prayer, Larry. And I've seen God keep his promise. So you better believe it. I count it a privilege to pray for with, with believing mothers yeah. and fathers too. I love to pray with people who need a miracle for their children. Yeah. And, and honestly, I know there's a lot going on in the world right now. <clears throat> we'll talk about that, I'm sure, in a minute. But, yeah, yeah. but you know what? It doesn't matter what's going on in the world. When your kids are out of whack, mm. when your kids are not walking right with God, there's nothing more important to a mother. Now, I mean, it's, it's the, the mothers I know. Now, there may be some that are exception to the rule, but the mothers I know and this mother right here, my world shuts down. So when your children, uh, that's why, again, I was saying there's no greater joy when they're right. There's no greater sorrow when they're not. So no matter what else is messed up in the world, if my kids are messed up, my world's messed up. Yeah. And uh, But we've got a God to go to that changes things. Yes. We don't have to accept it. We don't have to just sit and let our kids be washed away by this world. And it's lies and deception and culture. We can go to God. He will hear our prayers. He will answer our prayers. And there's some mothers watching tonight that they need to know. And I want to tell you prophetically, your son and daughter's coming home. You can't give up. And that's why the Lord has, has, has you watching. This moment right now is to encourage you in your faith that you cannot let go of the promise of God. Well, goodness gracious, I think the Holy Spirit's already here in a powerful way. And, and I want to encourage you folks. We're going to talk about something that was on Karen's heart. But I, I do want to encourage you. Listen, with these videos that I do, I don't care who shares them. I, I mean, I do. It's nice. But I don't do this to get shared. I don't do it to get likes. We, we do this because, you know, whether it's Karen doing her front porch session so faithfully or me just popping on doing these when I feel like the Lord has something to speak. We just want to be faithful with what yeah. God is saying. But I do want to encourage you, okay? So buckle up. Um, if you do know some parents, if you do know some people uh, in your sphere of influence who need encouragement, who need hope to keep praying and believing for product. And in fact, as Karen was saying, man, we're already here. But uh, I felt even prophetically to say there are some that are actually on the tipping point. There are some that are on the tipping point, as you've seen with your daughter. And in the natural, oh. it literally looks like they're going to go over a cliff. Yeah. But in the spirit. I believe it's just one step closer 
to actually having a breakthrough. Um, and that's why you, it's, it's sometimes that I learned this, it, it, when it seems a lot of times the worst is right before the breakthrough. And a lot of times it gets worse instead of better right when you get a promise from God. So yeah. don't be moved if it's gotten worse lately. It may have gotten a lot worse lately. That does not mean anything. Your circumstances do not change the words you've been given. Mm. I thought I was supposed to read this, this word to somebody. Can yeah, I do that? please. Isaiah, I don't know. Listen, mother, whoever you are right now, the Lord's told me to read this to you. Isaiah 49. Uh, and Larry can tell you, we didn't plan to do this, by nope. the way. This is not what we had. <laughs> we were going to talk about this. I just, this is the Lord. Isaiah 49, verse 17. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. The Lord said to tell you tonight, watching, soon your descendants will come back soon mm. and all who are trying to destroy you will go away look around you and see for all your children will come back to you all your children all all means all not just one all all of them are coming back don't settle for less don't negotiate some compromise with the enemy for less than what god's promised you all of your children are coming back as surely as i live says the lord they will be like jewels or bridal ornaments for you to display. On the other side of the page, look at this verse, Isaiah 49, verse 25. I've read this so many times. But the Lord says the captive of the warrior will be released. The plunder of the tyrant will be retrieved. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. For I will fight those that fight you and I will save your children. So mother, hang on to that promise. Right there, that's your word. That is more sure than anything you're looking at in the natural. It's more sure than the text message you got today that was meant to discourage you. That's far more sure than what that phone call or lack thereof that you got today. It doesn't mean anything that circumstances are lies. This is the truth yeah. in the name of Jesus. And you know what? I feel like, again, we didn't plan on any of this, but Holy Spirit obviously wants to communicate this. I've been in Luke chapter 8 for a while where we have that very famous story of them getting on the boat with Jesus. He goes to sleep. The winds and the waves come against the boat. But you know what I love? Jesus, he tells the disciples at the beginning, he says, you know what? Get on the boat. We're going to the other side. And I feel like the Lord just wants to tell somebody, you're going to go to the other side. Yea, though I walk through, his desire is not for you to die in a boat somewhere with waves and storms crashing against it. And his desire is certainly for not it's not for you to die in the valley of the shadow of death because it's on the other side where Listen, the devil is afraid of what your mouth is going to say when you get to the other side and the testimony you're going to release. Just like Karen and her wonderful daughter, Lindsay, are out there shouting it from the rooftops, what God has done in that family. And I tell you, there's a tangible anointing when they share that testimony because uh, God is a redeemer and a restorer. What he did for them, he'll do for you. That's it. That's it. Oh. Wow. Praise the Lord. Okay, here we go. Well, <laughs> well, I was listening to a wonderful sermon by your son-in-law recently, Casey Doss, who's just such a wonderful Holy Ghost preacher. It makes me want to like run around the room and go old-fashioned Pentecost. Yes, um, me too. But I, at, during this meeting, I think you were at Perry Stone's place, you got up and shared a little bit about something that kind of was disturbing or unsettling your spirit just about the bombardment of news right now and kind of what Holy Spirit was talking to you about. And I thought this was so relevant because so many are watching right now. And listen, here's my story. Transparently, just we're, we're feeling and sensing the atmosphere in the earth. I mean, the earth is groaning. I'll wake up some mornings. I'll be laying there and I'll have a voice whisper in my ear. It's like, Larry, why even try? Why even get up? Why even engage all of this? What can you do? And I realized, Karen, like you were talking about, and I want you to just share what's on your heart concerning this. I realized I have been indulging, feeding on the wrong news. Um, and again, we're not supposed to be ignorant. We're not supposed to have our head in the sand. But I, I do believe God wants us to feast on what he's doing. So please share about that. That was very timely. Oh. Well, I was talking, it was last week, actually, the Lord began this little thought in me, in my spirit, because all of us have been watching the news a lot lately. And it's understandable. We're living in days that we've never seen anything like yeah. before. And it's literally changing from day to day to day. It's, it's just to keep up with it all. So I get that. But, but 
last week it was like I heard the Lord say to me, whose news are you more interested in? Mine or the world's? And it really began to, to grip me that I'm being too affected by the world's news because we have two sources that we can draw our wisdom from. And there, the Bible says in James that there's the wisdom of this world or there's the wisdom from above. The wisdom of this world, you'll know when you're hearing the wisdom of this world. He says, in James, he says, it is sensual. It is, well, he says first, it is earthly, it is sensual, and it is devilish. So when you're listening to the, the this world's news, Jesus said, Satan is the God of this world. So if you're, if you're listening to that constantly, then you can become under the influence of a demonic, like satanic, even just the devil's influence, which is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Meaning earthly just means it's of this world. It's passing. It's, it's filled with the chaos and the, the effects of sin, which is death. Also, it's sensual. The earthly, this, the wisdom of that's from below, the wisdom of this world is sensual. It's based on always how we feel. That's what's with this generation right now. They don't, if it doesn't make them feel good, they don't want it. It's got to make, it's got to be always pleasing to their senses. What we see, what we hear, taste, it's always sensual and it's devilish. It's born of the spirit of darkness. That's going to result, even James says, where there's that kind of stuff, there is confusion in every evil work. Confusion in every evil work. But the, the, then he says the wisdom from above is first pure, it's peaceable, and he goes on. Go read it for yourself. I think it's in James 4. But here's the deal. I love this because Paul tells us that, I'm going to paraphrase here for just a second, the reason that you and I lately watch this stuff and we just feel like, if you're like me, Larry, I think you probably relate to this and those of you watching, you just watch this and think, Lord, I don't even fit in this world anymore. Yeah. Do you ever feel like that? You just, I don't fit here. Well, you know what? We're not supposed to. Mm. Paul said, we are citizens of heaven. Oh, not just someday when Jesus returns and he's going to return. We are citizens right now. On Right now, in this life, on this messed up planet, we are walking around as ambassadors of God ambassadors of God. We are representing another kingdom. When we are born again, we're born into the kingdom of God. We change citizenship. We are from heaven on the earth. But you know what? It'd be awful easy sometimes for us to just say, I just want to get out of here. I just want to go into heaven. Paul felt like that sometimes too. Paul felt like, you know, sometimes it'd be better for me if I could just go to heaven. He said, it'd be better for me, but it's better for you if I stay. Yeah. You know why? It'd be better for you and me if Jesus, like the other day, I was like, Lord, just come. Lord, this world is, it. Lord, are you seeing this news? Because this is a mess. Just come on. Uh -huh. And then I just realized, oh, you know what I realized? He is waiting to give time for people to repent. And as long as he is lingering, Larry, as long as the Lord is lingering and restrained from his return, it's because he needs us here praying. We can't leave right now because he's got to have intercessors. Listen to me, my friend. We can't leave the earth right now because in, in Ezekiel, judgment was coming to the to Israel. And what did God do? He wasn't going, yay, judgment, yay. No, he was looking for intercessors. So there may be judgment on, in, in many ways in the world that we're yeah. looking at, but I believe God's raising up women and men that are watching tonight that will be watchmen on the wall and be intercessors. Yeah, I believe he's right. As you're saying that, I do believe for those of you who are watching right now, um, he is raising up watchmen, watchwomen. He's raising up intercessors because the authority of the intercessor is powerful because God may unveil or reveal what the enemy is doing. He never does that though. So we can see that. Please hear me because I know right now there's a lot of swirl going on. I know there's a lot of concern about is God going to try to blow up this planet, you know, like the Death Star and Star Wars? Is God really like, no, God's heart is mercy. He desires mercy over judgment. And I just want to tell you as an intercessor, do not devalue your assignment when you pray. And if you really sense you're called to pray into something and there's a warning or that type of thing, listen, it's not a prophetic inevitability. It's something that God wants to raise up intercessors in this hour that actually change history, that actually shift things. That's not written. 
Larry, did you did you hear Micah's dream the other night? No, Micah? I didn't. Oh, let me tell you this. Please, one. come on. I, I ain't got time to tell you all of it. Let me just tell you part of it because I want those listeners to hear yep. it. So last week, Pastor Micah Wood, he pastors the Ramp Church here in Hamilton, Alabama, where we are. And Micah dream, Micah has this, he's just anointed for dreams, like unbelievable. Anyway, he dreamed, I'm going I'm to hear the high points. He was sitting in the first Wesleyan church. Mm -hmm. I love that part. Number one, we love the first Wesleyan people. And also because John Wesley was a man who brought a great awakening to our nation. Yeah. Well, anyway, so Micah, Pastor Micah is sitting in the first Wesleyan church. He said, he said he was in a suit because appropriate to the, you know, the place of worship he was in. Micah said that as he's sitting there, he begins to feel a cool breeze. And he said he looked, he was going to look at the man next to him and say, excuse me, but uh, is it getting a little chilly in here? He said, but by the time he said that, a wind hit that room in that building, that auditorium. He said it was a whirlwind, but it wasn't an evil one. It wasn't like a tornado of destruction. He said it was the glory of God. Mm. And he said this whirlwind hits the auditorium and it begins to swirl and everybody in the sanctuary is caught up in this whirlwind and they're whirling in the sanctuary. And Pastor Micah said, he began to think, oh, this is revival. This is the glory of God. He said, and in the dream, he was thinking, oh, this is amazing because they didn't even expect it. They weren't even asking for it. It just came. Well, then all of a sudden, he drops out of the whirlwind. <coughs> he drops out of the whirlwind, and he's standing before these young men. And Pastor Micah said, he begins to prophesy. And, and Micah said, as the words came out of his mouth, he himself was hearing them for the first time. And here's what the Lord said to Pastor Micah. Listen, Pastor, the Lord said, I am looking for watchmen. Mm. or cities will be no more. Wow. I am looking for watchmen, or cities will be no more. Yeah. And the, the dream went on, and I got time to tell you the rest of it. It's wow. mind-boggling, but here's the deal. I believe that that is a prophetic word for us right now, that we, what the Lord is, is needing in this hour from us is that we are not being moved by the natural news on our television, yeah. but we are we are so in tune with the news from heaven. <clears throat> we are ambassadors. We're citizens of heaven. We need to be hearing heaven's news. Yeah. We need to be knowing God. What are you saying over this city? You know, when when Nineveh was about to be destroyed, he looked. What does he do? He didn't go. Oh, yay! Nineveh is about to be destroyed. No, he he finds Jonah. I need a prophet. I need somebody to call him to repentance. So God is looking for watchmen today. And I believe God's calling you that are watching tonight to be watchmen over your city. Come on, be watchmen over your family, be watchmen over your children, but be watchmen over your city. Yeah. Go to prayer for your city, that your city will become a place of refuge and that God will raise up in our nation intercessors and warriors. If God did it for Abraham, I would have, and he would have spared Sodom. Yeah. Yes. He would have spared Sodom had he found had he just found 10 righteous. I believe God's looking today for more friends of God like Abraham was and Moses who interceded and spared nations. Well, this is all very interesting because I see I'm like I, moment by moment, Karen, in the midst of these conversations and saying, Holy Spirit, what are you what are you saying? How are you bringing this all together? Just track with me for a minute, because this goes into I believe it was a dream or a vision. You'll have to correct me if you had it or Lindsay had it, where her deliverance, Lindsay's deliverance, opened something in the spirit, and there was a whole bunch of others that were behind her when she was coming. I may have you share that because let me just, let, this is kind of how we'll go, we'll finish, we'll pray. I actually felt like the Lord saying, it is not a surprise that Karen Wheaton's on here, who has a real authority to pray for those believing for prodigals. I'm going to prophesy right now that I believe God is going to reach in in this time because Exodus chapter 2 and Romans 8 say the same thing. Exodus 2, end of Exodus 2, the people are groaning under slavery in Egypt. And it says their cry comes up to God. Yes. And, Ro and Romans chapter 8 tells us something, the whole creation is groaning. The earth, we're, we see it. We see a manifestation right now of literally the planet groaning and it's waiting for what? 
It's waiting for the unveiling and the manifestation of sons and daughters. I prophesy that that son or daughter right now that's in a dark place. I believe, Karen, and I believe tonight this is a sovereign setup by God, but mother, father, who is ever watching, those who seem right now, even literally, naturally, if they are in a dark place doing dark things right now, I believe God is going to reach in and do something sovereign and supernatural. And that son or daughter that was in bondage and in sin and in darkness is going to be a reformer in the days ahead. Karen, can you share that vision and anything else that you sense? Well, on it, was, it was a vision. When my daughter, Lindsay, uh, this, was, this was in 2014, 15. It was actually a little longer than that, but that was the main two years. When she was a prodigal away from God, left her family, left her ministry, left her children. I mean, left, well, left her marriage, left, it was, I was a nightmare. And, but as I prayed for her, the Lord began to teach me the authority he's given us in his word and uh, the authority that he's given us in his name through prayer. So I, one day I was praying in the mill house where I love to pray. And I saw in this vision, I'm going to make it short for time's sake, but it was this building, like a concentration camp. It was long out. It was in a desert. There was nothing there. There wasn't a tree inside. It was just desert. And it was this long windowless building. And, and I knew that the, it, as far as you could see, there wasn't another building or anything inside. Just that one thing. And on the end of the building was a door. And there was a demonic spirit that looked gigantic, like an evil orc or something on the right side of the door. And I knew that my daughter, Lindsay, was inside that building and being held as a captive. And it was like a spiritual concentration camp of sorts. So, but the Lord told me to go to it every day to approach the door, to approach that spirit and speak the word. So every day in prayer, whenever I would see that thing, I would walk up and I would say, the Lord says, and I would quote that scripture I just quoted to you. And I would quote, the Lord says, the captive of the warrior will be released. The plunder of the tyrant will be retrieved. For I will fight those that fight you and I will save your children. And I just walk off. Well, whenever I would come back to pray the next day there, that I'd, I'd go into that vision. I'd see that building. I'd see that demonic spirit. I would just walk up and say that exact same verse. The Lord says, because don't, don't ever talk to demonic spirits unless you're just quoting the word. Yes. So one day to my shock, I mean, I'd been doing this for months and the door of the prison opened and out walked Lindsay. I I didn't even, I hadn't pre-thought it. I hadn't imagined it. I didn't, I didn't know it was going to happen. I was getting ready to do my verse. Out walks Lindsay. I was so blown away and she was just walking, staring straight ahead. She didn't even see me standing over there looking at her. I was so dumbfounded. I was thinking, there is Lindsay. And she's walking out. And then what shocked me the most, I never dreamed this was going to happen was all of a sudden from behind her was a throng of young men and women that comes pouring out behind her. I never saw the end of them. It was a throng of young men and women pouring out of that prison behind her. Some of them were dancing. They were doing all kinds of different things, illustrating their gifts and their, their anointings. I was so shocked. And it was that day that I realized why the fight for my daughter was so fierce. And why it had been so intense was because I wasn't just fighting for my daughter. I was fighting for your daughter, mm. and your son. And that I'm telling you right now, I, I, I want you to know the reason your fight, this spiritual warfare has been so intense is because this thing is bigger than you are. This fight, what's this victory is beyond anything you've ever dreamed. Then you're not just fighting for you and your family. You're fighting for the people that's going to be transformed by the testimony you and your family is going to be able, able to give to the glory of God, whether it's for the healing of your body, for the financial provision you're believing for, the rest restoration of a marriage, the return of a prodigal, whatever it is that you're believing for, that's why this has been so fierce and it's worth the fight. Take it to the end. Yep. Well, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray for that, but also, you know, one of the, one of my favorite quotes, it's a very simple quote, but I remember hearing you share this years ago. Interestingly enough, you were ministering at our church in South Florida and you were preaching and pouring your heart out while you were literally in the middle of this fight. I, I remember that. And you taught not only our church, but I believe you've taught the church. How long do you pray a promise of God? Well, this is what I learned from you. You pray until. Until. That's it. And that, that's the answer. That's the answer. 
Amen. So, it's all through the word. It's all through the word. We pray until that's when you give up. And then, well, you don't ever give up. That's when you receive it. Yeah, yeah. When, when you pray until you have it. Would you mind just praying just for a moment into that? Just, just because you, you were, and then we're going to pray for children. But I, I feel like for those of you who are watching, where you know, you may not be praying for prodigal children. You might be praying for a financial breakthrough, a, a marriage, or a, a physical thing, something in your body. Um, you need to cl- hang on to that. You pray until, and I believe Karen, just because she's had to pray until. She does carry an authority and an impartation in that. And I believe the Lord's saying, I'm going to release a spiritual grit into you where you are relentless in prayer. Would you mind praying for our friends, uh, Miss Karen, for that? Yes. And Lord, strengthen us, strengthen our friends right now. Yes. Uh, for Larry and I, we agree together that you yes. will strengthen our brothers and sisters that you had watched tonight. Lord, some of them are weary and well-doing, and they don't mean to be, but I've been there before. I know. So, Lord, I pray they will be renewed and not be weary and well-doing because in due season, they're going to reap and they're not going to faint. Lord, I'm asking you to renew their faith and give them a fresh word. I pray that you'll give them a word like now, like quick, like a word that's going to explode in them tonight to renew their faith. I pray that you'll give them a joy that doesn't even make sense. Lord, give them such a breakthrough that any move of God, as Bill Johnson says, is a move of God. So, Lord, I pray they will see a breakthrough, a shift in Jesus' name. We declare that prodigals are coming home. Lord, Lord, go get them tonight. I pray that you'll make them miserable in sin. Hmm. I pray that they will never find pleasure in sin. I pray that it will be disgusting to them. I pray that you'll break every wrong relationship they're in. I pray that God, relationships that are leading them into deception, I pray that you'll destroy that relationship and bring them right men and women that will speak truth to them in Jesus' name. Destroy, God, this plan of the enemy against them and let them walk in truth. I declare over your son, your daughter, he or she will know the truth and the truth will set him free. The truth will set her free. Oh, God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Protect their body, protect their soul, and protect their spirit, God. In the name of the Lord, we believe you, Father. Yes, yes. And I just want to encourage you right now. I do believe wholeheartedly that the ones, that the very ones that the Lord wants to literally throw into the chaos right now, every area where there's chaos, everywhere from Washington to Hollywood, every single area where things are just out of control, I believe those who are in darkness right now, the, I feel like God is saying the marking hand of God. We're tonight, we're, we're believing for the marking hand of God. They cannot be talked into the kingdom. It really demands a supernatural touch and encounter with God. And I believe our prayers have the ability to release that. So I encourage you guys just to have that perspective. Like Miss Karen was saying, it's not just about your child, although that's a huge thing, it really is even, it's about the future. Because the Lord's saying, I want to sow your children into the future. Yeah. I want to sow your children to be solutionists who can turn things around. Um, but that's why there's such a war against them. And it's not just against their life, although that's a big deal. It's a war against the fulfillment of their destiny. And the enemy will try to get you to stop praying because yes. nobody will pray for them like you. Nobody. Come on. God, he's going to pray for them like you do. So he's going to try to discourage you and get you too tired to pray or get you too discouraged. He's a liar. Don't listen to anything he says. Pray anyway. If, if the best you've got is just to sit there and just Jesus, 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 then speak his name over them. Yeah. Give him what you've got, but give him something. Yeah. Pray and don't stop. And in this hour right now for our nation and for our world, yeah. I'm telling you, this, this word is everything, and we've got to hear it. We've got to hear the rhema on it. And watchmen, wake up. Wake up, watchmen. Wake up, watchmen. Yeah. We've got to pray. We can't get discouraged and get under all of this stuff. Yeah. We've got to get above it from heaven's view and decree heaven's word over our nation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm believing for an awakening, Larry. Yep. I believe the whirlwind's coming. I believe the tidal wave of the glory of God's coming. Yeah. I know it may be tough and it may be a lot of stuff going on, but I believe in God's coming in a glorious manifestation. Yep. I, I, you know, I'm quite convinced of that because sometimes it's easy for us to get swept away in all the darkness. I believe one of the reasons we're seeing what we're seeing, not the only reason, one of them is that I do believe something from heaven 
in an increasing manner is breaking into the earth. And when that happens, as we have historically seen, please hear, hear me, because I, I, what Karen is saying, so many of us, so many reputable, le- I mean, I, I'm, you know, Karen's reputable. I'm, I'm, I'm here to help uh, <laughs> to, to come alongside these leaders. But I'm thinking of Sid Roth. I'm thinking of John Carroll Arnett. I'm thinking so many of our friends, they really are convinced that we are in the precipice. We're on the tipping point of God breaking in. And I believe the darkness, just like we see in the Gospels, when somebody gets delivered, from demonic oppression, yeah. um, what happens? You see a violent, often disturbing manifestation. The earth yeah. right now is experiencing a manifestation, and I believe places like the ramp. I'm convinced. Years ago, I'll never forget when I was there visiting you guys, one of my favorite places in the earth, as close to heaven as one can get. Um, I was there for an early morning prayer meeting, and that marked me because I saw these young people. It, it was not hype. It was not entertainment. They weren't looking to be cool or to impress one another. They were there, I think it was eight in the morning, praying fervently. And I remember in that moment, the Lord spoke to me and he said, the future is actually in good hands. The future, if, this is, if this is a taste of what God is releasing into the earth, then yeah, there's a lot of darkness, but don't, let, don't, don't get under it because even places like the ramp, I prophesy that, is a first fruits of what God is releasing in the earth. And that alone, those kids alone can shift things. That's not hype. That's not that. trying to just you know get us excited. That's true. We've seen it in history. I believe that, Larry. I believe that. And he needs everybody right now. It's all yes. hands on deck. Yes. Everybody's needed. Everybody. Every age, every place, every church. I don't care the denomination. All hands on deck. Let's all pray. And let's usher in the coming of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Well, I do want to tell people, and I have it right up here, your book, your amazing book, Watching the Road. It's available. I think it's only like $7.99 on the Amazon Kindle. But you can go to Amazon. It's called Watching the Road. And of course, I only promote resources that I think are going to really transform your life. That, I mean, I I was intimately um, aware of the process of that book, and I got so fed in the process of just watching it be be done and you writing it and releasing it, folks, it has that anointing on it. It has that authority on it and it will give you, it has an impartation for spiritual grit that will give you the grace to keep praying until specifically, but not exclusively for prodigal children, because those principles you learn, that's useful and that's applicable for everything. For anything, any situation that looks impossible. Yeah. Prayer works. But thank you for saying that, Larry. I appreciate that. I believe oh. it will bless people. And you were a part of it. You always will be. Larry's just part of our whole ministry. We're just family, aren't we, Larry? We love and it. I, I honor you, man of God, how God has raised you up and oh. your voice and your anointing. You're, you're impacting and changing the world, Larry Sparks. And we honor you and thank God for you. You're very kind. Well, again, we're all in this together, folks. And the, the folks that I, I run with, the folks I have on, these are not people I just go find. Oh, that's a person that's notable. These are these are people we run with. We're we're in this together. And last thing, I do encourage you if you're not already, join Karen's front porch family. What is that? What you're like? What is that? That's where I mean. Is it is it every week that you record a video on Facebook? It is. It's on my Facebook. Just Karen Wheaton. Yes. Every Wednesday night at nine o'clock. In fact, I think there's one fixing to go up right now. Yeah. Look at what time it is. Uh, yeah, I just finished it actually before I came in. So yeah, every every Wednesday night, nine o'clock Central Time, I release a message and a word. And front porch friends, it means if you read the book, you'll understand. But it's it's the place of intercession. Yeah. So it's it's to encourage people in their walk with the Lord in, in prayer. Oh, I love it. I love it. And again, you will enjoy those videos. I just enjoy figuring out where you're going to be, what scenery <laughs> will be behind you, whether your dog will be with you, whether you'll be near the creek. Um, it, it, it is always exciting. I'm thinking, where will Miss Karen be this week? Uh, it, it is the, I'm always the same place for the most part. You got my books behind me and I try to keep it as interesting as possible. Um, but we, we do love you and I encourage all of you folks, uh, even that right now in comments as we're you know getting ready to say goodbye, let us know if you watch and if you're part of Karen's Front Porch family, it's available to all. I believe you'll be blessed and encouraged. But uh, Karen, our family loves you. We're great. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate it.
We love you, Larry. We love all of your friends. Thank you for having me. All right. And for all of you folks, we'll come and talk to you soon. Thanks for joining us this evening. Again, the book is Watching the Road. We'll see you soon.